30 years ago, the velocity of these winds do not go farther than 135 kilometers per hour. Now they go as much as 175 kilometers per hour to 200 kilometers per hour. And the magnitude of destruction is almost unimaginable. We now have about a registered 1,000 deaths and about 500 are missing. And the ruin could amount to as much as 5 billion. For a, for a small economy like the country, that's almost 5% of our uh, GNP, which means that if these typhoons continue for the coming 20 years, we don't get the answers that we're supposed to put together here in Doha in the coming 20 years, that country is going to be devastated into poverty. And so like many other countries like we are, the, the timetable that we have set here in Doha of cutting carbon and making the appropriate combination of assistance, technology, and support for the countries that need it seem to respond to the length of time that this ruin is bringing about. So this ruin in the Philippines is a dramatic challenge to the whole convention to put its act together. Let's stop the debate and put on the data and the science and then begin to implement it with the appropriate political decision. Unless we do that, then we seem to be blind to these disasters that's happening. Well, I mean, the yeah. Philippines obviously has a, a loud voice in, in these negotiations. You, I think you said the, the country that's ranked third in the list of most vulnerable countries uh, yes, in the world. Yes, is first in the United Nations definition of most vulnerable, Vanuatu, and then the Philippines. But if you take into account the fact that Tonga is much smaller habitation, there are not more than 100,000, it's only an island, and Vanuatu as well, much smaller than the Philippines, and we have 1,700 islands. So you multiply the vulnerability of the Philippines by a hundred more, and that's the vulnerability of my country, which tells the world today that the movement which the United Nations has put into operation is being challenged. We have discussed, we have debated, we have rationalized, we have shaped the science, and the way is clear for us to implement the decisions. Why are we not going to implement it? Why are we pussyfooting about it? The host countries here in the Middle East are supposed to take positive and exemplary action. We don't see that. And yet the danger is not just us, because it happened in the United States. It could happen with any one of the continental and any one of the developed countries. It's happening to mankind. Only that the Philippines today is a tragic and a very sad example. If we close our eyes to it, if we are deaf to it, what is the point in having all these conferences of the United Nations? Well, we keep hearing the term that ambition levels. Ambition levels are far too low. Sense of urgency isn't there. In a way, the question is, you know, what more can you do? What more can you say to increase that urgency? I mean, you've been hit by this, this terrible typhoon. I mean, what else can be done to bring the issue home? There's nothing more that should be done. Let's stop the debate and put the science into work. There are calculations that could be done. And in the coming three years, uh, there are modes and steps to be undertaken as an organized and intelligent species of man. Otherwise, what we set in Copenhagen of two degrees Celsius centigrade will be tapped. And when that happens, uh, perhaps there's really nothing more that humanity will be able to do. There's nothing that human ingenuity or the humanitarian impulse of addressing his distress would be called upon. Doha is a turning point. Doha would be the decisive point where mankind makes its final decision to confront this.